Good morning. Welcome back to Ministry Monday. I'm Carlton Kuhn. I want to talk with you today about the challenge of leading when the pressure is building. And it is my contention that leadership has to showcase its best for God and the best for the people that we're leading during the times of the greatest stress, uh, unrest, and distress. So how do we do that? Now, when you read Second Kings, Elisha is one of the great examples of a prophet, a man of God, acting as a leader without really having a position of authority within the kingdom of Israel. But at the same time, there are some things that we can learn from a not-so-good king by the name of Jehoram regarding leadership when uh, we're trying to lead in a pressure cooker, and I feel like that that's where we're at right now, and it doesn't seem that the end is in sight. And a lot of times people's exhaustion and weariness of life is not simply from an event, but it is the constancy of the struggle that there is no ease, there is no uh, let up. And that's what I'm feeling just now. In 2 Kings chapter 6, there is the story of Ben-Hadad, who was the king of Syria. He came and he besieged the capital city of Israel, Samaria. And because of the siege, there came a time when there was a great famine and people were starving, things that they would have not considered eating in the past, like dove's dung. Uh, was something that they were willing to pay a premium to have for lunch or dinner. And so as the king walks out to survey the situation, look over the walls at uh, ben Hadad's army, uh, there is a woman who he walks by who says to him, Help my lord, O king. And uh, he said, If the lord don't help you, where shall I help you? Uh, can I get something out of the barn floor, out of the wine press? And of course, he was being sarcastic. And sometimes as leaders, we can be sarcastic when sarcasm is not particularly uh, required at that moment. And so the king, not understanding her dilemma, said to her, what ails you? And the woman told him, well, uh, I had a bargain with a lady. We each had a baby. And the bargain was that we would boil my child yesterday and eat it, and then today we would cook hers and eat that baby. And the scripture says that when the king heard that, that he rent his clothes. The king was feeling the pressure from the Syrians on the outside. He was, in all likelihood, not eating as well as he had been. But on this day, the leader of Israel realized that the people he led were in worse condition than he was, and he rent his clothes. The renting of clothes is an expression of extreme grief in that Eastern culture. And so he passed by up on the wall, and those he passed by now they looked at him and they saw that he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Generally not wise for a leader to wear his sackcloth as a badge or for it to be the outer garment because people need to see their leaders as having faith, not fear or despair. But for this king, even while he postured and presented himself as royalty, Within, hidden away, was the scratchy sackcloth. Sackcloth irritates the skin, tends to make the eyes water. And in this moment of impulsive response to what he saw, the tearing of his garments, the people saw what they would not have seen otherwise, that the king was wearing sackcloth. Two things that I want to bring home to you today in this particular ministry Monday. Number one, as a leader, don't showcase your sackcloth during times of distress. Just now, 
with all that's happening in our world, our people need us to be balanced. Somebody may be Henny Penny saying the sky is falling, but that can't come from you. And you don't need to be a ducky daddy or a goosey Lucy who comes in behind Henny Penny echoing the unproven. The pressure's on. And Jesus needs his leaders to be those who handle the pressure the best. If you don't handle it well, your people will handle it worse. You feel it. But when you get to God's house, you praise, you worship, you pray with faith, you speak words of faith, you don't get disenchanted and let it be seen. But the second thing is this, that you also feel with your people. On the wall that day, Israel's king realized that the people had it bad. Yes, he was feeling the pressure of the siege, but to date he had not boiled any of the princes of Israel for lunch. Sometimes as leaders, we become insulated from the realities of life, but no matter how bad you feel, how much stress, duress, or pressure there is, there's somebody who you lead who's got it worse than you have. And so you need to wear the sackcloth, grieve with them, feel their hurts, and let the Holy Ghost use you to minister to those hurts. Don't let our sarcasm, don't let our inclination to just say, well, what can I do about it? That's what this king conveyed, but he was feeling intently the difficulty of the moment. I feel the difficulty of the moment. I want to respond well. I want to bring faith to those I lead, and I don't want even in conversation to be henny penny. The sky's falling, the sky's falling, the sky's not falling. Jesus is in charge. It's going to be all right. There is revival in the land. Let's let it rumble. But at the same time, I want to have, I want to share, let me put it that way, in the struggles and the challenges of those that I lead. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. Look forward to seeing you next Monday.